to talk on. <laughs> Logan made it. <laughs> um, what would I tell myself in college? I really wished it could have been on the fruits of the Spirit, right? You look that up, you study it, and then you deliver it. What would you tell yourself in college? That is like serious soul searching. I honestly thought about, for mine, could we just replay lanes? Because dead on. I amen you so many times, only once out loud, and it's when I said, when you said you married the right one. I was like, amen, out loud. Other times I amen you uh, inside, and a couple of times I wanted to stand up and say, he's teaching truth. Are y'all listening? Are you listening to Clay about forgiveness? It's so real. Are you listening to Kelsey about being whole in yourself before you look for that relationship? Uh, Braden, will you pull up for me James 1, 23-24? Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law gets freedom and continues in it. Not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So it really doesn't do any good for me to fight these nerves, for Clay to get up here, Lane, Kelsey, if we don't apply it. Just curious, you don't have to raise your hand. Did anybody do the seven up thing? Seven up in the morning, seven minutes, what Brianna talked about. These, these are wonderful thoughts, but if we don't put them into action, we're defeating our purpose. So I just encourage y'all to apply it, even if it's only one little thing. If you take away one thing from every night that you come here and you use it and you apply it, then it's worth it. Um, okay, I talked about that. I have a client. Her name is Jana Jamison. She's a, I have, I'm a hairdresser, 30 years, not taking new people. Don't call me. And I um, was talking to her because I have some solid Christian women that I'm privileged to do their hair. And I was like, this is my topic. This is what I have to talk on. I'm like, what in the world? And she said, well, Kelly, what, what do you want them to know? What, what, is, what do you want them to know? And I said, I want them to know that I knew all about God. I knew all about Jesus. But through my life experiences, I've met him. Like I, I, it, he's real because I went through some experiences. She said, oh, you want Job 42.5? I said, I do? What's it say? And so it Raiden. says, Raiden. <laughs> Caught him off guard. Um, my, eyes had, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes see you. And I was like, yes. Who knew that was in the Bible? But it's so true. That's exactly what I want you all to know is the, the God I studied and the God I'd heard of and the God I had been brought up, brought up with learning and being taught, I've met him. I've met that God of peace, and I've met that God of joy, and I've met that God that provides and that is my strength. Wow, he's been my strength. He's been so faithful. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm nervous. Um, okay, we're going to talk about my childhood. I was saved when I was nine. I went to church Sunday morning, we even went Sunday night, and we went on Wednesday night, and it was um, my life. Like, I didn't know any different. Um, I loved it. I loved my youth group. I loved my pastors. I loved, um, it, it, was, it was a wonderful childhood. Like, I have nothing negative about it. My grandmother was um, a soft warrior, I guess you would call her. I think if I ever had like a deep, troublesome situation, I would say, I'm going to go spend the night with grandmother. You know, that was just that solid rock that I could always go to. And she would say, would you like to have Bible study tonight or in the morning? It wasn't, are we having it? Or would you like to have it? It was, you can pick. We'll have it tonight or in the morning. It was short. She didn't go on forever. But God was first in that house, and we knew it. And it was a safe place for me to go. 
My mother is um, Clay's warrior, and Logan Jacobs is their grandmother, my mom. And she um, still to this day is my rock and who I go to when I need prayer or whatever because she's grounded and she's in the Word. She's in the Word all the time. So in Sunday school, growing up in church, um, I went, you know, you, you promotion Sunday. I was Baptist, so I don't know, you promotion Sunday. So the next year you went to a new classroom. It was all so exciting. Well, about the third year, I was like, do all the teachers prom- promote with the kids? And mom was like, no, I just promote with you to make sure you're getting it and that you're hearing the word of God correctly. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that makes more sense. You're always my teacher. I didn't know. Um, my dad, he would have told you he couldn't read or write. I kind of doubt it. I think he could. But he was a builder. So his way of serving was to take groups on mission trips to down to um, South Texas, and we would build churches, and those were my vacations. Like, the women and children would do Bible study, and the men would construct a building. And so um, that was how he led. That was his spiritual gift. That's what he could do. And, and he chose to use um, his skills for the Father as well. His may not have been teaching, but his was going to be out working, and, and he served in the way that he could. So I was, I, I'm backing all this up so I can explain a little bit. Um, I, was, I was involved. I was in church. I was going all the time. When I was in youth, I was even asked to be on the pastor search committee because we were getting a new church, a new pastor at our church, and I was to represent the youth. They wanted someone from um, all angles. Well, I want you all to know the negative about Kelly. Um, I gave everything to God but my relationships. Um, I was a role model in school. I wasn't ashamed of the gospel. Everybody knew Kelly was a Christian. I stood up for what was right. I I really wanted, I had a little healthy fear of the Lord, and I always wanted to serve him, and I did. Um, One thing y'all might think is funny, I don't know, but... It was our senior year, and we were in class, and they were trying to figure out where they could have the senior party, and we had a swimming pool growing up, and so they were like, well, we could have it at Kelly's. She has a pool, and I'm thinking, I am, whoop, I ain't even going, and they were like, what, BYOB, and everybody was looking at me like, and they go, bring your own Bible, and I was like, oh, they all do know, or, <laughs> so, um, but that was okay with me, too. I was like, I, I was proud of my faith. I, I was. I was proud of um, my upbringing. And I, I didn't, I wasn't proud like I was above. I, like, love people. I, I wanted to lift my friends up. I wanted to be there for them spiritually. Um, here's where it gets where I was at fault. Um, I thought I was enough to bring people up. Lane's a little example of the little stand up here and trying to pull the guy up to the top and you pull him off. I thought I knew enough. I was enough. I was all these things in the church and I I could help the guys that I dated. I look back when I had to plan this, I did not date one Christian. I didn't. I dated great guys. Great potential. Some went to church Some didn't, but they all had the potential, and I really felt like I could influence them, and I could do it. They would, I would date some, they would do something that I couldn't handle, break up with them, we would get back together, and guess what? I would get back together because I'd do better this time. I would be a better influence. I would bring them to church. I even gave one guy a Bible with literature in it that my mom taught us in those Sunday school classes, which was called the How to Live book. It's wonderful. I still have it. And 
the red, if you mark your Bible in red, it was about fear. If you marked it, no, anger. If you marked it in yellow, it was fear. My sister's here. She might be like, that ain't right. Um, if it was purple, it was marriage. Um, and then, so if you flip through your Bible and you saw that color, you knew that's what that verse was going to be about. So my mom taught that through the years and still, you know, it's a great thing to have. Anyway, I even gave a guy that. And I, <laughs> Lane, I'm sorry I'm using you so much, but it's because you said... Um, that you could you could change them. You said you don't like they don't like you. Apparently, I didn't. If I'm trying to change everybody, right? Were there guys in my high school that were strong Christians? Probably, but they may not have been the cute ones and the popular ones. And I could fix them, right? I could fix them. I'm a I was a cheerleader, junior high, high school, college. I still think it's my spiritual gift. I want to cheer people on. The kids will call me all the time, and I'm like, you got this. You want to do that? Yeah, we can do it. I never tell them no. True. <laughs> okay, so that's a long introduction. But the first thing that I would tell myself in college is I would get a megaphone so that y'all have a visual, and I would yell myself, it is not your job. You are not the Holy Spirit. So that would be the first thing that I would tell myself. Second, okay, now we're going to get into scripture. Would you peel up Ephesians for me? Thank you. Um, sorry. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. So um, I want to dissect this whole verse. Uh, this, Yeah, it's 14 through 19, I believe. So the beginning of it is kneel before the Father. Um, personally, I pray all the time. I pray in my car. I pray at work. I pray before bed. I, you know, you pray before meals. But do I, did I kneel before the Father? Did I bow? Did I take that posture? Did I take Scripture literally? No, I didn't. Um, I thought if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm, it's just he and God and I got the Bible out and I've got my notes and I, I'm studying, I never felt the need to kneel. So, and I'm talking about up until now. So I'm studying and Robert's getting ready, my husband, and he, I said, I need you to come, come here. We're get, we need to kneel and pray. And he was like, okay. So, um, we got down on our knees and we prayed, and I thought, it's almost like when you stop and you kneel, it's almost like God um, is, is listening a little more because you're more sincere. You took time to not just in passing throw a prayer up, but you're kneeling before the Father, and a kneeling position is saying, you are God and I am small. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You use the earth as your footstool. I am nothing. When you get on your knees, I beg you to do it. Um, those people in passing at work that say, will you pray for me about such and such? All of a sudden, I remember them when I'm kneeling before the Father. I'm just, you just take more time to slow down. I'm very hyper I don't like to sit still. I like to be going all the time. So for me to stop and kneel, I think the Lord like woke up. And up for me, he was like, there you go. I've been waiting on you to get it. So uh, let's see. Okay. So that's what it, all I want to say about kneeling before the Father. But what the second thing, first thing, it's not your job. The second thing I would tell myself is to apply scripture like it says and take time to bow before him and seek his will. Um, this part, I'm going to kind of stay in for a little bit longer. Can you do verse 16? Okay. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. We're going to stop there. Um... Why would it say to pray for strength, do you think? Because you're going to have trials <laughs> in life. 
I used to hear people say, oh, I don't want to get too close to God because then I hear he like, give you, gives you all these trials. I'm going to do just enough that I'm not, you know, he's not, I'm not getting attention. That, no. You will go through trials regardless. It's just life. We're in a fallen world. You either have him on your side or you don't have him on your side. I want him on my team. Um, in James 1-2, if you'll pull that up for me, Braden. It's so sweet. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will see the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And I love that. I love the promises. I talked to y'all at the two-minute talk about there's over 8,000 promises in the Bible. And I challenge you to get your phone out and use it for something good and search those questions and search those things in your Bible. What does the Lord say? What does the Bible say about prayer? What does, the, what does it say about fasting? What does it say? Google it and pull it up and use your Bible, as your, your phone as a tool. So I have two stories I want to share when God strengthened my inner being, which is what the verse is talking about, with I went from knowing to seeing God with these, this example. Um, Jacob does not know I'm going to share his story, but um, I, was, I, I had Clay and Logan, and... I went to my doctor's appointment, an annual checkup, and I went at the annual checkup. <laughs> oh, Lance, the doctor came in, and he was like, um, hey, everything's fine, all their tests come back good, but um, you're pregnant. I was like, <laughs> that is so what I did. I just started laughing. I really just started laughing. And he was like, no, like, I'm, I'm, you really are pregnant. And I said, that, no, I'm not. I was like, stop messing with me. And he, I said that. And he goes, Kelly, I can't mess with you. I'm your doctor. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. I had just canceled maternity insurance the week before. No lie. We got it back. It was within 30 days. But <laughs> so I'm... I am freaking out. This is the first time I think in my life I am dependent on God, right? Oh, my goodness. So what does any good wife do on the way home? She calls her sister. <laughs> I was like, okay. she didn't. She was like, what? I can't understand. I'm pregnant. Just sobbing and sobbing. I do love you. I wanted you, Jacob. And I am just... Bawling. I, I'm like, Clay, look, I left y'all at home and y'all were playing on the driveway and life was good. And I, I just didn't know. So anyway, this gets worse. Y'all get so much worse. So I go home and I tell my husband that I was pregnant. And I, I don't even think he replied. He went in the office and started calling the insurance company. I, I, I was like, whatever. So the next week I go back. Y'all... I'm serious. I go back the next week and the doctor comes in and he was like, um, it's twins. And I was like, you're messing with me again. And he was like, no, I'm not. It's twins. I was like, I cannot believe it's twins. So what does a good wife do on the way home? She calls her sister, not her husband. She calls her sister. And I'm crying again. Twins. I put the heck? And so I come home and I tell my husband that we're, it's twins. And he just starts banging on, <laughs> banging on the kitchen table and he goes, we're two away from Brady Bunch. <laughs> and I was like, you deal with it your way, I'm dealing with it mine. I mean, seriously, I'm so stressed out right now. So I go back the next week and they were like, well... I just, you're just going to have one baby because um, the, we, we don't find a heartbeat. We can only find a heartbeat on one baby. And so I was like, okay. Now I'm, I'm one. I can do this. And so I go back the next time, and they're like, both babies are growing. But we can't find the heartbeat. I guess we missed it last time, and it was hidden behind the other baby, and we didn't see it. So your body will reabsorb the other one, and you'll just have one baby. Okay, so I go back in again. Uh, both babies are growing. You, you need to go to Dallas. Something's not right. So I um, 
go, have to go to Dallas. Now, I'm going to pause for a second and tell you a little bit about my grandmother, who was, at, I, would, I would cheer at Trinity Valley, would go home to Chandler and spend the night with her throughout the weekends. I just, I'm so close to her. I have to emphasize that at this point. So um, <clears throat> she has, was 90 years old, 91. She had had a stroke. And she had been in the hospital for a couple of weeks, and she had a wonderful life. At 90 years old, y'all, she got on her front porch with a Walmart bag and a knife, and she was like, Kelly, go get the four-wheeler. i got to grab some poke salad for Lemmy's lunch. And I was like, what is poke salad? I, don't, I still don't know. I, it's a leaf out in the pasture, but she hops on, and I drive her around. That's at 90. So at 91, she has a stroke, and she's in the hospital, and... She's okay at the beginning, it's worse and worse, and to the point that my mom's telling me she's having to um, open her mouth to get her for her medication, and she's just pretty unresponsive. But um, So um, I'm going to Dallas, and I have an MRI done to determine if the other, baby A is fine, baby B um, is the one they can't find the heart on, and, and so they're going to decide if, if there is an organ there or not. So I'm laying on the MRI table. It's very uncomfortable. I'm the size of a nine-month pregnant person at 22 weeks, and I'm short, and there's nowhere for it to go, and I sloshed a lot because it was all fluid. And um, I'm very uncomfortable. I'm most comfortable standing or laying on my side, but not flat on my back for sure. So I had to lay there for about 20 minutes, and I decided to think about my grandmother, and I thought about my memories, just to get my mind off of laying there. And um, they had already determined that baby B had a lot of problems. That was a for sure thing. We knew that. And um, baby A still looked good, still looked okay. So I get home that day from Dallas after having an MRI and laying there and, right, and thinking about my grandmother. And I go home and I'm laying in bed trying to rest. I hate resting. I like to do things and be busy. And I'm resting. And I get a piece of paper out and I write everything down that I had thought about with my grandmother. So my phone rings and it's my mom. She was like, Kelly, can you come to the hospital? And I was like, is everything okay? And she was like, uh, grandmother's sitting up in bed telling everybody here about heaven. And I was like, what? She was like, yes, you might want to come. So I'm like, I'm going to the hospital, you know, I'll be back. And, um, of course, he didn't want me to go. He was like, we just got in from Dallas. You're exhausted. You need to rest. And I was like, I can't miss this. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going. So I went to the hospital, and um, I could hear her in the hall um, just the laughter and the joy coming out of the room was amazing. The nurses were laughing about it, calling her the party girl. She had just come alive. And... I walked in the door, and she looked straight at me, and she goes, the baby is fine. And I was like, what a God wink, right? I mean, I'm so stressed at this point. Am I going to have an unhealthy baby, which would have been fine if that's the Lord's will, but I don't know. What, what is that going to look like for them? It just was so uncertain. I was pouring myself into the Word of God. I was listening to only Christian music. I was trying to stay positive as much as possible, but that's really hard. Sorry, hold on. When you don't know the outcome and you have to rely 100% on your faith and what you've been taught as a child, you're at this point learning, is he, is he going to be there? Is he that real? And um, the answer is yes, for sure. But um, so... She told me that, and then I stayed there for two hours, y'all, and I listened. She was a Baptist, like this kind of Baptist, like don't move, we don't raise our hands. And she was singing, God, love everybody, just love everybody. And then she'd go, he's just so beautiful, over and over. She would say, he's so beautiful. And then she'd say, he did it just for me. He did it just for me, too hours y'all this went on and I was, it was the most beautiful thing ever so her doctor came by the next day because she had gone back she did dismiss us as grandmother would um, about two hours later she was like y'all go home I'm fine 
I'm good. Y'all go on back to your houses. Grandmother's good. So we did, and um, the next morning she was back to her coma-like self. And her doctor came by, and they said, um, he said, I'm sorry, there's nothing else that we can do. She's not, she's retained fluids, and her heart can't handle anymore. And, and, and we looked at him, or my aunt did, I wasn't there, and said, were you, do you know about yesterday? And she, he said, no, I don't guess. And she told him everything, and I love his reply. He said, what an exit, what an exit. So when I was thinking about it, I was like, y'all, be that, I guess I can talk to the men too, but the girls, be that warrior for your generations. I had that. The boys had that with my mom. Um, pass it on. What you do today affects your kids. It affects your grandkids. It goes way, way back further than just thinking of yourself right now. What you do, it matters for your future. Um, so the third thing I would tell myself in college is to never stop studying his word. Okay, the next one is, um, I think it's just that verse again that we had up there, I think 16. Okay, so that Christ may dwell. Oh, no, I liked the other one. You can go back. Yes. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. What does dwell mean? We tried so hard. We didn't get it, did we, Braden? We didn't get that picture, did we? No. Okay. Have you all seen the real estate sign around town that says dwell? Because, you know, you've seen Remax and you see Cornerstone. I mean, those are okay. But dwell? That, that's, that's your home, right? That's why they picked that name. And I love marketing, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. It even has the little dot on it, like right here. So if you Google Jesus, would the Google map pin land here? Does he dwell in your heart? Is this his home? Is he not a visitor? But does he live there? If he lives there, can I ask y'all some uncomfortable questions? What music do you play for him in his home? What um, TV shows do you have him watch with you? Now, if you're not a Christian, he's not in there. But if you are, it's either yes or no. He's watching with you. You don't get to tell Jesus to turn around in the corner for a little while. He's there. So what, what friends do you invite over to your house to, for Jesus to hang out with? When you drive around Tyler and you see that dwell sign, y'all remember, what am I letting Jesus listen to? What am I letting him watch? What, what, what kind of home am I? Um, you want to keep your house clean. You want to, you want to do it because you love him. You don't want to do it because you have to. You want to do it because he wants more for you than you want for yourself. Y'all, we hold on to junk. One day we're going to get to heaven and be like, I held on to that. You wanted to give me that? Trust him. Trust him. Rest in him and trust him. His word is true. Fourth thing I would tell myself in college, Kelly, keep your house clean. Um, okay, now I'm at verse 17 and 18. Braden. Okay, so that Christ may dwell in your heart. We did that. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, okay, ready, may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people. Okay, we're going to stop there. We need church. You need church. I need church. We all need church. This is great, and I even count it as church. I don't think you have to go to a certain building. We're in church. This is church. Okay, I'm good with that. But when you go to, have, has anybody been to Passion? How do you feel when you're there? Woo, nothing can stop you, can it? It's the most amazing feeling ever. It's so awesome. Why? Because you're surrounded by other believers worshiping the Lord at the same time. 
Um, oh, my page turned. Uh, church camp. Go to church camp. It's the same thing. You come back on this high, and it's wonderful, and it lasts for a long time. Let's say you go to Boathouse. You're feeling good. Everybody here is singing those songs that the band's so good. Y'all are so blessed. What I mean, this totally gets your heart ready. Um, there are 24 hours in the day. There are seven days a week. If we do one hour on Sunday, maybe, one hour at Boathouse, we're leaving about 166 hours. Um, we're not really probably going to win the battle. You know, you got to have the quiet time. You got to get up and do the seven up. You got to, you got to talk to him. You got to be friends with him. You, you got to want to be with them. Find a church home. They really talk about that a lot up here. They give you a lot of suggestions. If you don't fit in at any of those, we go to Cross Brand Cowboy Church. You can fit in. You can fit in there. I promise you. Um, let's do Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I see the day approaching. We just did a Bible study on the book of Revelation. We've been saying it for years. I can hear y'all. I've been saying it for years. The Lord's coming back. The Lord's coming back. Um, prophecy? There's a, a whole lot more that's been checked off the list that has to happen before God comes back. It, it's, it, the, the, it is drawing near. It may be in a thousand more years. It's still drawing near. We don't know. So just be ready. Okay, what did Kelly do wrong in college? I would convince myself that I knew enough that I had been raised in church. I'm off at, at Trinity Valley. Um, I was cheering there. It was pretty much all about me at that point um i was loving what i was doing first time not living at home um we were picked to win nationals it we did nothing but practice it was so wonderful it was two of the best years of my life those aren't negative things but i i would just go to church when i went home on the weekends and if i didn't go home i didn't go I might go if I went home to, or to uh, Chandler to spend that with my grandmother. I would go with her. But I did not plug in in Athens, Texas to a church. And um, I should have. Sh and if there wasn't a college youth group, I should have started one because I had so much knowledge, remember? Um, so there's really, really no excuse. And um, that's a huge regret and mistake because who knows where, what my life, how it would have taken um, I could have encouraged so many more. I, I lived for Christ in college. It wasn't that I went crazy or anything, but um, I, I coasted. I coasted with my past and my childhood, and I would encourage you to get involved and get plugged in. And like the two-minute talk, I don't know his name. Justin? Tristan? Tristan um, said, serve. Go serve. That's how you get involved. That's how you meet people is to serve. Okay. Fifth thing I would tell myself in college is to get involved in a church. Okay. This is where it kind of gets fun for me. Let's go to verse 18. Okay. That you may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ. Um, I, I like that part. Let me tell you why. Because he is wide enough to cover all my sins, all of them, and I like that. It is long enough to pursue me from beginning to end. He pursues me constantly. Um, you know how you, like I said, you do the highs and the lows with your spiritual walk, um, the mountaintops of the camps and the low times when, you know, you just get distracted with life, it happens. But then you do something, you know, come here and you're back up again. I use this example in one of our family Bible studies. And you're going to go up and down, but it needs to be like the stock market. It needs to go up and down, always going up. You know what I mean? So just, he's going to pursue you. Um, 
He's pursued me at my lows. He's pursued me at my highs. Um, but he's always chasing after me. And I love that. Deep enough, his love is deep enough to die on the cross for me so that I have life. And I have life in heaven. And he conquered death for me. And I love that. And then my favorite is high enough to seat me with him in heaven. Who doesn't want to sit with God in heaven? If you don't, you're telling a story. I mean, everybody would love to sit with heaven, in heaven with him. Um, filled with all the fullness of God, which is verse 19. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I kind of touched, touched on it earlier. Um, don't, don't get to heaven and, and, and regret holding on to things that you think you're in control of or you think is enough let God trust him and let it go and see what he has for you um, ask him reach out just be filled with all God has for you the fullness of God because we know from scripture Jeremiah 29 11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's what our God wants for us. It, go, please look up in your phone the promises of God. They're never ending. You'll, you'll, you're going to be shocked. I love the Life Application Study Bible because if I don't understand the scripture, I can look it up on the bottom and it explains it so perfectly and so easily. Um, so the seventh thing I would tell myself is don't miss all God has for you. Um, trust him and believe in him. And um, okay, so the band can come now because I'm going to close. Um, I want you to pull up Philippians 2, 9 through 11 on the screen. So my question to everyone is do you ever want to be right? Like, who doesn't want to be right? I want to be right. I mean, we all want to be right, correct. Well, stand firm and stand solid on the Bible. It's 100% truth because this verse, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day we're all going to bow before the Father. Um, I want to be the first one to hit my knees, not someone holding my neck going, yes, you will. You know, be, be so all about him that when he does return, and it is time to hit the knees because we're all going to go to our knees. We will confess him as Lord and Savior one day. Um, I just pray that um, you're ready and you can't wait to, to kneel. So we're going to summarize. Num first thing, it's not your job to be the Holy Spirit. Number two, bow down before him when you pray and remember who he is. Number three, strengthen your inner being. Never stop studying God's word. Number four, let Christ dwell in you. Don't bother him. Let him live in you. Number five, get in a local church. Surround yourself with believers as often as possible. Number six, never ever doubt how wide, how long, how deep, and how high the love of God is for you. Number seven, don't miss that all God has for you. Fill up with him. Let go and trust him. So, I pray? Okay. Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to college kids and just to young adults. Lord, I have a passion for you and I have a passion for them. And I just pray, Lord, that something you said tonight would affect them and they could use it in their their own lives, that they could trust you more, that they could just let go and let you control all situations and really understand the love that you have for them. It's so amazing and so wonderful. I thank you, God, for this opportunity that I've had tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.